Thank you very much. First of all, Nanache, let me express appreciation to the board of the John Ivan Sata Mills Memorial Heritage for having the courage to invite me. What we lack in Ghana is political courage. I remember when President Mahama invited me to the Senchi Forum. I was in South Africa. I arrived Friday night at about midnight, got up 4 a.m. to drive to Senchi. Got there so that I'll be briefed in the morning by Professor Kwesi Bochwe before the session started. But Kwesi did not brief me well. He did not tell me some invitees were not coming. So after the formal session, all the press, the TV, radios descended on me. Why are you here? And I said, why? They said, your people are not here. I say, oh, the Ashantis didn't come. <laughs> they say, no, 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 not the Ashantis. I said, the Catholics didn't come. No, 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 no. You mean the Achimotans didn't? They say, no, the NPP. <laughs> and I said, I'm first and foremost a Ghanaian. And I do not allow anybody to select whom I associate with in other forums. The team is John Evan Atamels, the man, 10 years on. When we were in prison in Sawem, I see my friend, Nyahutamaklu is here, Captain Nyahutamaklu, Dr. Nyahutamaklu. A police officer was detained and sent to us. He was a bit flippant, and when life is short, you don't want to deal with flippant people. I never tried to associate with him. And when he was leaving, we had to have a party for him. And I was the most senior because I passed. After in prison, you, come, you start with white. And then once you have five years in over, you become a black coat. But the black is blue. <laughs> so I had to uh, chair the function. And he was speaking and he said, character cannot be amended. Character cannot be changed. It can only be amended. And I stopped what I was doing and looked at him. And I said, I've missed an opportunity to have learned from this man. Professor Mills was first and foremost a decent human being. An honest man. A man of character. And this is, I'm talking about this man from two perspectives. I wasn't his friend. We liked one another. I'm talking about the young, bright, keen teenager who arrived in Achimote about 60 years ago when he was in Form 1. I was in Form 5. When he calls me uncle, people don't understand. Because in Africa, monkeys play by sizes. <laughs> <laughs> it 
What I noticed about this man is he was a precocious hockey player, so he used to play with, a, with us, the big boys. He wanted to win a good team player, fair and a stickler for the rules. And I noticed that. I noticed that his friends were not like others who go always with their tribes men. His best friends, Yao Safumafu, Kwabna Kwanza. Kwabna Kwanza is a fanti raised and brought up in Obwasi. Yao Safumafu from Mevisa. And Joel Hyde, a gang. So in his friendship even, you saw that these were the people he picked. And one thing I noticed about this young man, he danced to his own inner tune. You could not influence him. Once he made up his mind, that's what he was going to do. He was not one of the people to go with the mobs. And this characteristic of the young man followed him into politics. So he was fearless to lead. You couldn't change him. He danced to his own tune. So this is the man I'm going to talk about, the young man who became a man, his political uh, persona. Why do we need him today? Look at the state of our politics. Highly politicized and polarized. And the leaders terrified, paralyzed with fear of the people they are supposed to lead. You try to get two or three people to join you to do and talk to power. Hey, Charlie, you did the more. The young people will kill us. Let's talk to them for them to kill us. Otherwise, when they get hungry and angry enough on the streets, they will kill us. <laughs> the joke going around Kumasi, I just came from Kumasi yesterday. Is this young, bright lawyer goes to the chairman of the constituency, Charlie, next time the municipal court parliament, I want to go to parliament. And he's small. So the chairman lifted him up and said, Charlie, they said the parliament, your blows. Was it one, one, one thing yet? Then? <laughs> we are paralyzed. We need people to go across the political divide. And males definitely have crossed the political divide. <laughs> so we need the Atamel's character today more than ever. The man who will reach across, a man of peace and of courage. The process of acquiring political power is like going to putting mineral oil through fire, a furnace. If the character is good, it comes out shining. The character is bad, it worsens the character. It's no different from the process of losing power when you lose control and you are in prison. Prison reveals if the character is good, you become better. Your character is bad, it becomes worse. I'm going to refer to two Dagomba sayings. There are no sayings an old Dagomba person taught me. He said, if you 
dress up a donkey as a race horse on the day of the race it will be revealed for the ass that it is. So the press and media can dress up leaders for us. But when they get in, we'll know. If their character is not good to begin with. The other one that he taught me was, if you have a friend and think this friend is good, Oh, he's humble, he's nice. Maybe he's poor, give him money. If he has money and he's so humble and nice, maybe you have a good friend. And then, if it is within your powers, give him power. And if he has power and he's so humble and nice, then you have a very good man. But most people cannot handle power. But the process, Mills went through all this process and remained basically the same, a decent man, a good man. The only time he talked a little about corruption with me, and I think that was the last time I saw him before he died, he asked me one thing. Do you know Francis Dodo? And I said, no, he's never asked me about anybody else before. And he said, I think you should try to know him. I said, okay. I forgot it. Two weeks after he died, and I said, I better try. So I called this young man, Francis Dodo, now Professor Dodo. He came to see me. We had a chat. And then I realized what Professor Mills meant. We need people like that for Ghana to move ahead. I try to just go through a few illustrative purposes to show the man, the man that Atta Mills was. I've said this before, and I give you the background, the context. I was a consultant to a German businessman. And when he came to Ghana looking for me, and it's us who created this, we and them. He was told, oh, come here, he's a member of the MPPO, you can't use him as a consultant anymore. So they gave him an NDC consultant, which was fine. So, I'm staying in my house and a guy calls me. I say, oh, are you in Ghana? He said, yes, I've been here for about a week. Oh, I've been here for, see, oh, I need to see you urgently. I say, okay, come, he came. And he said, I'm in trouble. I said, what trouble are you in? He said, oh, we went to see Professor Mills. And uh, <clears throat> I was advised by my consul. He said, you have another consul? Oh, yes, yes. They told me to ignore you, I people. I said, okay. <laughs> So and uh, they said that uh, we should prepare a small envelope for him. And we left the envelope now. A soldier has come to summon me. I think there was something wrong with the envelope. <laughs> I said, don't worry, go, he's a nice man. And if it is about the envelope, you can say you were advised. And uh, you won't do it again. And if he's, he's pushing you, tell him you are my friend. He's also my friend, so maybe. He said, OK. So he went. And Professor Mill said, I thought we were giving me documents on your company. What is this? And he threw like this. And the man said, oh, I was advised to put something small. And he said, take it. And please don't do that again. And I said, thank you, sir. And of course, the German also was a bit cheeky. And said, what about the other envelope to the big man? And Mel said, when you see him, you discover him. I wasn't there. Go. <laughs> so the man left. How many of you remember when Mills was doing his campaign? Whatever politician in Ghana has been bold enough to say that 
the people, some of the people are allied to govern with are members of the opposition. Kwame Adukufo, Yaosafo Mahafo, Kwame PNM. Do you remember? For avoidance of doubt and clarity of purpose and avoidance of conflict of interest, let me say I am NPP after being a Ghanaian. May I say that these are the people I like to govern with. And for avoidance of com uh, conflict, when President Rawlings was leaving power, I think one of the last things he did may be from the influence of uh, Professor Atamels. He gave me, in connection with my what, what, do we, what do the lawyers say? My uh, state, not state, my treason related uh, conviction. They gave me an absolute unconditional pardon. Absolute unconditional. And the beautiful thing of it, I don't even think the lawyers would study that and write about it, is that they set aside the decision of the Supreme Court that I could not contest as a president. They set it aside. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Mills was always looking at the other side. How many here, you didn't see political colors. How many of you remember when he was campaigning and we went to a visa. The constituency of Yaosafu Mafu and Ajay Mafu. He opted to sleep in the house of his old schoolmate Yaosafu Mafu, a member of the NPP, instead of Ajay Mafu, a member of the NDC, similar houses next door to one another. Most of the politicians now will not dare. They will say, the supporters will kill us. <laughs> we are terrified of the supporters we have. We've militarized them. Foot soldiers, we are scared of them. Invisible forces, <laughs> boot for boot. <laughs> this is what we are inheriting now the children in parliament. I now refuse to address any parliamentarian as honorable. It was aspirational. They are dimming Ghana's bright brand as a citadel, a beacon of democracy. So I will not address any of them as honorable until they apologize to the nation. These a few points that I have made show us the character of the man. I was going to see him with Ato Ahoy and the Airtel Tigo when the founder, Sunimita, was in town. And my chief executive, being a good Ghanaian and using the Ghanaian political equation, had told him that would not be good if I, as chairman of the board, accompanied him because I was NPP. Uh, that, so Sinimita said, no, 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 we'll go with Mr. PNM. So my chief executive went and collected him, and I was supposed to find my way. I got there. When Professor Mills heard I was on the other side, he sent for me to come to the private side. My own president one time even refused to see me and my people. <laughs> so I went there, uh, surprised. And then I said, uh, Prof, is there anything that the man can do for you? 
I was hoping that we'll do something united India and the Ghana uh, hockey. He said, Accra, the thing bothering me now is Cape Coast University. They are auditorium and theater and so forth. I said, about how much will it cost? He said, maybe about a million dollars and a half. I said, okay, I'll tell him. So I went to the other side, and as we were walking in with my chief executive and Atu, I then joined me, we were going in, my chief executive went to around this and then he was going to direct, this man seated. Then Prof said, no, no, Akira, come and sit by me, put me here, put me there. And then he was trying to get Atu ahead of Atu, said, hey, how can I go if my boss hasn't gone? And Prof said, the Cape Coast thing, and I told uh, Sunil Mita, he wants something for Cape Coast. And he said, look, we have a legacy fund of $3 million there. If it's about $2 million, uh, let him just send the invoice and we pay. That's what we did. <laughs> so it is us Ghanaians who preach this. Before I end, let me talk a little bit about tax. Prof, as a tax man that I knew him. You know, some people use the Ghana Revenue Authority, the tax, as a way of harassing their political opponents. <laughs> One of our colleagues was being harassed. The tax people have been there for three months doing so-called auditing. So I went to the tax office. I hadn't seen Mr. Mills for almost uh, 30 years since I saw him as a, a teenager. I went without an appointment and I told them, tell him that Kwame Pierre is here. He was in a meeting. He stopped the meeting, came out to see me and said, Akra, what can I do in Azakra? You are here and you are using tax to intimidate political opponents. He said, Akura, it won't happen. I said, call your regional officer. The man came. Shifty eye, he couldn't look prof in the eye, couldn't look me in the eye. Prof said, Akura, I see, go. By the next day, he had removed all the so-called auditors. That was Prof Atamels. He doesn't see political color. <laughs> a little bit about education, legal education. Most people do not realize how difficult it is when you are enemy of the state and you have to defend yourself. It's a lonely position. Your friends will not talk to you. They run away from you. So when you are looking for a lawyer, it is very, very difficult. Through my interface with the law, I recognize three types of lawyers. I note that the Atamel's Foundation is also to influence legal education. The first group of lawyers I note, and that we should produce more of, are those who are trained and know that the law is to serve justice, to deliver justice. <laughs> There's another group, good lawyers, who want to do good and help people, but feckless, they don't have the courage to help people. The third group, brilliant, dazzling. We don't want those. They are the ones who look for the loopholes, for the dictators to oppress us. I remember when I was being tried, they say, oh, technicalities should be avoided. Hearsay evidence is acceptable, provided the judge warns himself that is hearsay evidence. Technicalities 
are not acceptable. If the government with all the lawyers cannot do the charge properly, it means they are not fighting to deliver justice and therefore throw it out. If instead of saying the man threw 555 five, five, cigarette, you say 555, five, throw it out. It is better for 10 guilty people to escape than for one innocent person to be imprisoned. When I remember the days I spent in prison, I remember vividly the lawyers coming. Cromwell Quist will be dragging down to the prisons, you know, sometimes being hustled by the prison officers to talk to the young people, to write, prepare habeas corpus to get them to be released. When after he's finished all this hard work, the parents' relatives will come and say, hey, 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 I buy some money and pesa. Don't go and challenge, don't go and honor them. Please sit. Cromwell Quist, alone, coming to do that. We want the legal education, we want to influence, to produce more Cromwell Quist to help the people. When I was being tried, trying to get a lawyer to support me, in those days all the lawyers were not attending the tribunals. Yeah. My brother has struggled to become a lawyer. He wanted to say, my brother, please, I don't want you to lose your license. He said, look, if I let them kill my brother, what is the use of my law degree to me? And I was facing a death penalty. So he decided, we brought somebody from the UK, a QC, to represent me. We had to go to the Chief Justice, Justice Apalu. He said, yeah, as long as you know traditional laws, you'll be fine to practice. That's the, uh, the man we brought from the UK. Then, only, and our women are strong, they are solid. Justice Anijagi was the only one who was prepared to say that, to interview my lawyer my, and say that he qualified, because I've been a DC in uh, Kenya and therefore understood traditional law. He said, you qualify more than me and sign the paper for him. Then my brother needed a, a lawyer, practicing lawyer, to sponsor him to practice law in Ghana. His classmates who qualified, they all ran away. One so-called human rights activist said to come to my office at 6 tomorrow and I'll sign it. My brother and this Englishman arrived there, 6 a.m. Maybe he wanted to sign in the Kodé mostly. He wasn't there. They waited until 2 p.m. He wasn't there. So they went back to Jasapalu. We can't get a sponsor. I asked my brother, how long have you qualified? He said, are you qualified? So my brother had to sign it. It's difficult when you are in trouble to get somebody. But the Chrome workers are there. So when you are training them, train more of, more of them. I do not believe in those who are saying we need a new constitution. The constitution we have with a few judicial adjudication and review can be brought to light. A few changes. We don't need to overhaul, get a new constitution. What is wrong with the constitution are us Ghanaians. The, pre the president has too much powers. The president doesn't pass law. We have 275 MPs sitting there. They are supposed to approve the ministers, it's not the president. So if we say yes, they are the ministers. We have a council of state who are supposed to make certain appointments in consultation with or on the advice of. I don't know what documents they say the president should bring 
when it's in consultation with or on the advice of. So it is not the president who has too much power. It's us to stand up and be courageous to say, Mr. President, this person you want to occupy this position is not good enough. They are not experienced enough. <laughs> the courage to take decisions. This was at a mail's. He appointed me to the Petroleum Commission. The minister called me, we are, uh, the president said we should appoint you. So uh, I'm put, I said, look, you haven't talked to me. He said, okay, when the president comes, can go and complain uh, to him. <laughs> I, I really didn't even want me to be appointed. <laughs> so please, the foundation, education, legal education is very important. So that people realize that the law is to be a service to the people. And all of us, let's support the judges to do what is right. When you're a minister and an investor is coming and complaining about the case before the court, don't tell him, please get us the name of the judge. We know what to do. You don't know what to do. We are supposed to help the judges to be independent, an independent judiciary. If the cases that go to the courts are adjudicated properly, there will be no need for people to be on the streets who have confidence in it. We we'll only have confidence in it if we all support them. We need to support the judiciary, independent. We need to strengthen our parliamentarians. It means you and I should stop going with our bills to the people in parliament for them to pay. They are not paid well enough. If we go there, then something goes to your committee. How can you blame them when they demand $10,000 for that? So in order for them to be strong to do their job, their Tamil spirit should prevail courage to speak your mind, courage to speak to authorities, and then, please, let us leave the press alone to work. And you press, if you want us to leave you alone, please, when you open your mouth and we are putting bread inside, close your mouth. I remember a, a, a renowned member of the press, of the so-called uh, independent press, coming to me, he's been appointed to serve on some committee. I said, Charlie, you cannot serve on the committee. He said, why? I said, you cannot be with the hunters and the hunted. <laughs> Simple conflict of interest. You cannot do that. Let me say that all of us should try to contribute to this memorial heritage. It should not be to immortalize the ideals of Sir John Evans Atta Mills. It should be to let his principles be at, at work, for us to emulate why do we set up a memorial so that these characteristics, good characteristics of the South Mills, sound character? As we say in my village, when a young man I saw, I said, Papa, yet a teen will fear. Will fear Nyansa. And when Professor Mills said, Do you fear them? It's a principle. What does it mean? It means you of the NDC fix your own governance and let us in the MPP fix our own. If we do not have, if we do not have good governance 
in our parties. How can we expect to have good governance when we are in government? <laughs> Let our institutions be democratic, accountable, and then when they become governments, they'll be democratic and accountable. Let us all go out and say, all paid up members should vote for the presidential candidate, the chairman of the party, and the general secretary of the party. This is the only way we will stop the money influencing politics and that politics influencing corruption at the national level. In conclusion, I was told by Kwamina, you have to talk small. <laughs> I was surprised when it was Kwamina Ahoy and uh, Kwame Pepra, because the KP2, I'm supposed to KP1, who came to invite me. I have uh, an interesting checkered history with uh, Kwamina. I think that the Professor Mills I know, the hockey player, he will run, play the game to get a trophy. But one of these is, Kwame has to explain to us why instead of running the race, he ran to steal the cup. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get on very well, in spite of what people tell me. <laughs> but we, we leave that side aside. My, Ato is my friend. And the two brothers, Kwesi Ahoy, when I left prison and I was trying to make a living, and I went to set up a company, and I went, it was at GIPC, and I went and I said, Oh, I want this document. And he said, Oh, he received me nicely. And said, so, oh, Come, come tomorrow. I thought it was the usual come tomorrow, uh, Ghanaian come tomorrow. I ignored him. The next day I went. And Holy smoke. The paper was ready. I look at him differently. That's the competent one among their hoys. <laughs> Kramer is a partisan one among them. So. And Atu is a good one who knows how to good, do good, but he can also be cantankerous. So let me thank you, those who conceived and planned the Atamil's memorial heritage. In my village, they say that Obiya de Pa Osayeye Osaseda. I think the time has come that the board should apply for the Mo Ibrahim Prize. Atamels had a very short life. But when God wants to show us something good, it comes in a big flash. Big flash so that we all see the flash. Otherwise, Jesus could have lived to 100 years, only in his 30s. See, this is important. Focus on it. Look at his character. Goes across the political divide. Doesn't see a political color. Fair. He plays the game, team player, and fearless. What Ghana needs now? Leaders who are fearless, who are ready to lead in spite of what their people want. One of the things, if Ghana is lucky. If Atta Mills had not followed John Ejikum Kufo, who had democratic instincts, when his Minister for Communication went with him with a tax, all international calls were supposed to come through one. Kufo said, what does it mean, life? He said, oh, uh, we can see people's transactions, uh, they are talk, and this, Kufo said, ah, but this, against privacy, 
you'll be listening to people. He said, no. It was supposed to earn $50 million for Ghana. Kufo said, no. He refused. He had good democratic instincts. When Mills came, this same minister, who had been trying, went to the other side, and they passed it through parliament. And I asked this minister, why are you doing this? He said, oh, when we come to power, we can use this. What's the use of a government listening to people's telephone calls? If you are doing what is right, what are you afraid of? But we passed it through. And we had a consensus building Mahama. He tried. The other side did not have the courage to respond. I'm happy it is non-partisan. Please call us anytime if we need help and we shall be there. <laughs> when Kofi Annan wanted to settle the frosted relationship between President Rawlings and President Kufuor. He called me, Kwame, please go and arrange it for me. I said, hey, <laughs> both sides don't like me. <laughs> he said, no, you are the only one who can do it for me. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah. So I took the phone. On my way there, I called President Mills. As I read this, the assignment Kofi has given me, and uh, I hope you help me bring uh, Rawlings in because Kofi wanted to have coffee with Kofi and Rawlings. Then I called uh, now Ambassador Victor Smith. I said, uh, I'm coming to see you. And I said, Okay, come. I didn't, didn't know who was coming. When I got to the gate of uh, the Rawlings office, they come and look at me, and they go, what's your name? Grumpy, and they come and look at me, I go, come and look at me. So after five minutes, 10 minutes, hey, 50 minutes, then they let me go. And when I entered Victor Smith's office, he got up, hey, I say, it's me, no weapons. <laughs> I said my mission, uh, you know, the Secretary General would like to have a coffee with uh, then President Rawlings said, you won't go unless his lawyer accompanies him. Victor and I said, oh, Kufo will bring his wife and you bring your, he said, no, no, no. And he said, Kofi has not even called him since he came into town. I said, oh, is that so? He said, yes. So that gave me an out. So I said, okay, thank you. So I went back to Kofi and I said, you haven't called President Rawlings? He said, no. I said, how can you come to Ghana and not call him? I said, you better call me. He said, okay, you was going to call him. Then I said, then you arrange your coffee after you've called him. <laughs> so long live the Atamir's Memorial Heritage. Long live our one on only Ghana. And may the motherland help us to generate people of courage. Because all we lack in Ghana now, we have all the resources in the world, petrol, now the new batteries. We have lithium, we have cobalt. We have people. Osage we didn't have the people. There is no field of human endeavor in the world now where we don't have Ghanaians performing. Brain tumor, McCain's brain tumor. It was a Ghanaian who was working on it, helping them. Not one of the legacy schools, so Navrongo Secondary School. Doctor. The robot that went to Mars, a colleague of mine, Olenu, his son, was working on it. We have no excuse to be poor. The only deficit we have is leadership. Leaders with courage. 
Nana Chairman, I thank you and the organizers for having the courage to invite me. Thank you.